Ah, <sighs> all washed and showered and I'm okay now. Ooh. Hey guys, how's it going? So today was day 22 of my time in Benin Republic and it was also my last day. Now, today was emotional, but quite frankly, it was just long because I first of all set my alarm for about 6.40. Well, I set a few alarms. So I set one at, at about 5.45, then 6.30, then 7, then 7.30, just to make sure I got up in time, got dressed and was able to leave the house. The plan was to leave the house at eight, but didn't end up leaving until about 8.20. But that was okay though. I still got to the office of the transport company I was using um, before nine. However, that's when a few issues started. First of all, um, the bus hadn't arrived in time. I wanted to pay for the ticket. There was some mix up in some understanding about whether they accepted um, mobile money payments and they didn't. And so I had to go somewhere else to go withdraw mobile money. However, when I got there and tried to send money to myself using MoneyGram, when it got sent, I then realized that it wasn't going to arrive until the next day. And now I'd sent the money to a merchant, not directly to the company. So that was a bit of an issue. I then had to think, okay, what do I do now? I did have some cash on me in Naira, not enough in Sefa Franc. So I had to pay at a one-to-one -one rate, which wasn't the best, but hey, what do you do? I had to pay at a one-to-one -one rate for the uh, bus fare from Kotonu to Lagos, Yaba in particular. So I just had to do that and then told the lady that, okay, she should just send me a message when the money comes through to her account and then I'll tell her where to send it to next. Um, and then, so I did that. So anyway, got back to the transport company office and then I was there and I waited and waited and waited. And we didn't end up leaving until about 1.30 or quarter to two. And I was just like, this is just so long. And I ended up being the only passenger today. So instead of taking a big car, a big bus rather, it was just a car. So somebody drove me to the border. The drive between the transport company office and the border was only about an hour, even less than that. But yeah, so we got there and then we had to do some more waiting. First for the other car to come from Nigeria to the border. So they were basically exchanging, they were basically exchanging partners. So for the other car to come, then there was somebody who was supposed to help me with all the passport stamping that had to be done, that as well, um, that person we were waiting for for a while before he got in and then just waiting for the cars to arrive I ended up waiting at the border for probably an hour or two again then after that ooh, there was this little scene that happened which was quite interesting so the driver who brought me to the frontier to the border I gave him my passport and he was supposed to pass it on to the person who was going to help me stamp it however somehow they had some mix-up and the passports never got exchanged. In which case, by the time we got to the frontier or to the border in order to get my passport stamped, the guy realizes, oh my gosh, the guy's already gone and he doesn't have my passport. He has the passport of somebody else who he had come with from Nigeria. What do we do now? Okay, so the chase began. Like, first of all, the guy started running to chase us out of the car, but obviously a car goes really fast, right? The driver who was in the car that I was seated in decided, okay, let's go meet him by car. He hopped in the car and then we're frantically trying to call the other guy um, to slow down so that we could meet up with him and get the passport, exchange the passports. We kept going, we kept going. And then for some reason, the calls weren't going through and it's just a panic moment. What are we gonna do? Uh, we just kept calling, calling, and eventually the call went through. Uh, so he just stopped over and then we were able to catch up, exchange the passports, and then I was able to continue on my side of the journey. Whew, okay, that was a bit of a hot fluttering moment. Okay, so after that, we get to the border, we try and sort things out in terms of getting the passport stamped, and then we keep going. Now, the guy who took me on, again, I was the only passenger coming from Kotonou to Nigeria uh, with the company. So. Um, the guy who took me across was somebody who was familiar with the, with, did I say the border agencies? I think it was an official somewhere there as well. So um, he picked up other passengers on the way, people um, carrying different produce, different things like that. Anyway, we carried on and then there were checkpoints. I decided to count on my way in. There were about 30 checkpoints on the Nigerian side. Bearing in mind on the Benin Republic side, 
there was maybe only one or two and barely noticeable. But on the Nigerian side, there were literally 30 checkpoints. Somebody needs to have a look at that. Like that's just very discouraging for people trying to go across. And there shouldn't be that many checkpoints for a, a border where it should be open, where people should be able to move um, freely in between um, countries, you know? But anyway, then we ended up at some point switching cars. So I then got into the bus of the travel company um, at a location where they'd agreed that we'd meet and switch switch over and then I got in the bus and then the long journey continued. So this was at this point we're in Badagri, but then the journey from Badagri to Yaba in Lagos was just so long. It was so, so long. Um, the roads were not very good. And so just moving around was difficult. But even when we got to good roads, there was a lot of traffic because by the time we'd got in there, we'd gotten further into Lagos, it was probably about 6 6 30 p.m and so there was rush hour traffic it was just not great um and you can imagine it was quite hot as well but eventually i just kept telling myself you know what i'll get there eventually okay i'll get there eventually so sat on the bus tried to sleep wasn't very successful in that it was off a few times but didn't so I decided to film a little bit instead we eventually got to the offices and in between i called the person who was going to pick me up from the office to say um, maybe he should start coming over now. So got to the got to the office and then I had to wait for maybe another 10, 15 minutes before the person picking me up was able to get there. And then we continued our journey from there back home. But luckily we we're driving against traffic by this point. So, you know, things were things were okay and things were calm. And yeah, I eventually got home. I was just so tired. I first thing I did was just drop my stuff, go take a shower nice cool shower and then get dressed change and you know, feel feel okay i have some family nearby and so i just told them a little bit about my journey and just you know said hi to them and they also gave me some food which was great so did that and then headed back home and here i am <sighs> that was a long journey but i'm grateful for it i'm grateful to have gone to Benin republic i'm grateful that i got to experience so much life so much difference and so much similarity between what I'm used to and what I found in the country. And I'm just grateful for the whole experience. For me, I feel like it was a life defining moment because it pushed me out of my comfort zone. Traveling by road um, between countries in Africa is not something I've ever done before. So that was a new experience. And now I feel more confident. I know when I was going initially, I felt very nervous on the way back i didn't feel quite as nervous just because once you've had the experience of something it becomes easier to uh to handle the next time you have to deal with it because yeah you've been there before the greatest highlights of my trip to Benin republic were definitely meeting people and going to gonvier the floating village or the venice of africa as it's often called um, i think they were just two great things one was a great experience and the other was achieving something I set out to do. In going to Benin Republic, for me, more important than going to different touristy areas was meeting people and meeting people that I would call friends and people who I hope to keep in touch with over the next few years. And I did that. I got to meet wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people, different walks of life, some in a work capacity, some in just a friendship capacity. So friends of friends, um, some people I met at at the church there as well and they were also welcoming so nice i know one thing i have to say about Benin republic is that i felt very safe safe in that i didn't have anybody harassing me or in any way and in general the country is generally safe and secure as in their the rate of crime is quite low yeah it just it just felt very nice um being there i don't know how else to explain it and it was really nice um staying in a place that was literally five minutes from the beach, which was just very handy. Just in the evening, sometimes I could go for a walk and that was just really nice. So, 22 days in Benin Republic. I'm really grateful. I think that's just a summary. I'm really happy to have done this and I'm looking forward to more trips. Tell me, what country do you think I should visit next? I'm still thinking of being in West Africa, but I'm gonna stick to countries within Africa anyway. Let me know in the comments section what you think should be the next country I visit. Now, it, by the way, by the way, by the way, before you go, 
I have got a playlist of all my videos um, whilst at Bender Republic. So if you're interested in that, just check the description or the pinned comment and then you'll be able to go straight to the playlist. And if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. And more importantly, if you really found this useful, go ahead and share it with a friend that might love it as well. All right, I'll catch you later. Take care. Bye.